we have taken the uh, flash hider off, which is an important step. You're going to need to have the flash hider removed for the whole procedure. Um, flash hider will interfere with your uh, laser bore sighter. What we're doing now is we're just taking the gun apart in order to get at the barrel, because what we need to do is we need to fix the barrel. Most airsoft guns, they're a lot better than they used to be, but they still lack a lot of precision. One of the enemies of accuracy in airsoft uh, is the barrel. Um, it floats freely inside uh, the outer barrel. Um, what we need to do is fix it so that the inner barrel stays in position. Now, there's a number of different ways you can do it. Um, we're going to do a quick and dirty fix, which probably a lot of you will go at, but we're actually going to use painter's tape um, to set the barrel inside the outer barrel so that it doesn't move. Um, once you've actually solidified the barrel, so the inner barrel, so it doesn't move, then you can begin the actual uh, process of uh, laser bore sighting and then uh, doing individual shots in order to get the accuracy that you need. Until you do this process though, any kind of accurization that you, you do will be pretty minimal in results. Simply because that barrel could move around and what you zeroed on before, you bump the gun and boom, you're done. Now that we've taken care of the float in our barrel and it's solidly, the inner barrel is solidly made it to the inside of the outer barrel, uh, we know we're not going to have any barrel movement. Um, the next step, and it's really important, and I speak from experience and Brent can attest to it, um, one of the big pains in the butt when you're trying to accurize is keeping the gun solidly locked down while you do the testing. Again, any movement uh, in the system is going to result in inaccuracy and uh, your results you can't reproduce continually or see systematically. So what we did was we went up to Epps and we bought a, uh, uh, a gun rest. Um, that you, it's a real steel gun rest, but it can be used for airsoft as well. It was only about $89. And some of the nice features of, the, of this gun rest um, are uh, an arm with a, uh, a very strong spring here for uh, recoil, although you don't experience that much with airsoft. Um, the rest itself is very heavy, uh, so it acts as an anchor, and it has the ability to lock the gun in. And well, that's what we're going to do now, is just lock the gun into the rest. Okay. And another nice feature is that there's a tray underneath the mag, and that's handy because it catches any BBs that might drop. And uh, this Velcro fastener at the front, which locks the barrel down. targets that we're using are actually reactive targets and that uh, they actually, when you hit the target and go through it, uh, it bleeds out some colors so we can see it from down here. Um, but the targets will very accurately show where they were hit. Now we're going to go through the loading procedure. Um, Brent is actually going to be using nitrate gloves. The actual uh, oil from your skin um, can affect the BBs. Especially on the clothes. You're gonna commit a crime, and you're gonna leave a BB behind, and you load it up by hand, don't do it because they hold fingerprints up crazy. Don't ask me. What we figured out is that we have to seat the mag, load the mag, seat the mag in the gun, and then we have to bore sight the gun because the act of actually removing the mag changes the zeroing on the gun, so we're going to have to re-zero it with the bore sighter every time. That's what we're going to do right now. Test number two, it's 0 .30 styrene. Okay, you can remove the bore sighter. Yep, it's on. Perfect. Okay. 
Let it rip. <laughs>